today on Standing Firm and Free, God truly loves his church. And now, coming to you from the coast of North Carolina and Luke 418 Radio, we present Standing Firm and Free, a place where you are encouraged to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that you are willing to live and serve Jesus with boldness and courage in the world today. Feel free to reach out to Pastor Dan at Pastor Dan Berge at Luke418Radio.com. That is D-A-N-B-E-R-G-E-Y at Luke418Radio.com. And now, staying firm and free, here is your host, Pastor Dan Berge. Welcome, my friend, my brother, and my sister to Standing Firm and Free, a podcast where we enjoy talking about the Word of God so that we can together grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's great to be with you today. We are continuing a group of podcasts here on the book of Titus. And I don't know if you've ever studied Titus or not, but it is full of opportunities to be able to learn uh, the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and to know how much God really loves his church. You know, it is amazing to me last time we talked about God looking for leaders, and we're going to talk more about leaders. Uh, And when I use the term leaders, I'm really talking about servants, people who love God and who love others and who are willing to serve to be able to share this good news of Jesus Christ and how to grow and steps to take in that process. So it's really wonderful to be able to do that together. The last podcast, I got a little bit on mercy and grace and tried to define it a little bit. Uh, just because I felt like that that's what God was saying in the moment instead of just moving on uh, <coughs> excuse me in in this but we we talked about the key verse um, that I believe anyway that is actually uh, in Titus and we we explained that a little bit and we can we can really um, we'll get back to that probably at some point in time about the renewing and the regeneration of of our lives for the purpose of godliness in the world around us for the for the purpose of purity uh in the world around us and and that is really uh, a a large portion i believe of what paul was trying to uh, get titus to uh, help within the church to do now titus is a wonderful brother in christ um you know hopefully i'll get to meet him one day in heaven and uh it will be fun. Uh, probably won't need to talk to him about this because we'll be enjoying our worship uh, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords uh, there. But, uh, you know, it's just interesting to be able to think that one day um, we will be able to meet some of these individuals that we have read so much about uh, in the scriptures. But in this portion of chapter one in Titus, um, the heading is called qualifications of elders. Now, I'm not necessarily sold on that term. I don't pay a great deal of attention to those uh, headings that are in Scripture, <clears throat> um, but, but but it's good to have a little bit of separation to understand that there's a little bit there. But the point I want to say in this is it's not that I have a problem with elders. It's, it's really that I have an understanding, at least from my point of view, uh, that that God is asking us to develop the hearts and minds of individuals who are willing to be faithful in the church of God that, that God loves so much so that we can share his good news uh, with the world in unity. Um, now, I, I also believe in Ephesians chapter 5 where you have um, the fivefold ministry where you have the, you know, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the preacher, and um, at pastor and those those organizations. Now, I believe personally, when you get into those individuals, they're still all servants of the Lord and should be. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as we go through this. But in in this process, I believe that God does appoint individuals for certain aspects of the ministry within the church. 
Um, and there are certain groups of people that he appoints to be able to grow the body and to be able to work within the body. Now, um, you you might want to say, well, <clears throat> well, Pastor, where where do you fit in all of that? And uh, you know, I let, I'll just tell you a little bit that in my early years of ministry, I was actually a church planter. I actually thought. Uh, in my mind that that was the main thing, but let me go back. The main thing that I was going to do for my purpose and plan that God had for me, but let me go back even before then. My first thing of recognition uh, actually started when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Uh, I, I realized almost immediately that there was a purpose and plan that God had for my life. Uh, and and I was willing to try and pursue that uh, to find out what that is. But I didn't know that it would lead me to where I was at today. And that's the whole challenge I think that we face. So in, in my life, uh, my first response was, Lord, where do you need me to go or what do you need me to do? In other words, one Sunday morning, I'm I'm in church and the someone stands up and and uh, begins to give the announcements and they say, "Hey, we we have a church that is a sister church that is in need of some help. Just they just need warm bodies, basically what it was. We just need somebody to go over and help support that ministry." And that was actually my first response. I felt the sensitive uh, power of the Holy Spirit in my life speaking, and and I responded to that particular call. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't. There was it wasn't looking for a position. Uh, they weren't asking for a position, so to speak. Uh, but there was just this this internal desire to be able to respond to that need. And, uh, of course, as the story goes, uh, I, it was really God's plan, and I, I see it now. But I went over there, uh, my wife and I, Dorks and I, went over there with our children just to be um, support of whatever needed to be done. Well, next thing you know, within, you know, within three months, uh, we are leading the youth. Uh, within three more months, uh, I was asked to be the associate pastor. And started um, leading, you know, helping lead the church, and that's really where I begin to understand um, <clears throat> somewhat of a direction that God was was given to me. Again, uh, although I didn't know the direction, but I realized, um, and and then within another six months, I was actually pastoring that church, and that's when I realized uh, at that point that uh, I was not at a place. Um, spiritually within my own walk with the Lord to be able to do the things that I were doing, I was doing. Now, you, you might look at me and say, well, can't the Holy Spirit impact you and help you and strengthen you for that? Yes, he did. Um, but I knew that that was not long term. And, and uh, I'll, I'll get into this more. I wasn't planning on necessarily sharing a whole lot about my life story, but maybe it helps you understand and it helps kind of fit the puzzle together. So I realized in that process of about a year of leading that church as the, as the senior pastor that I needed more training. Uh, and not so much, I didn't feel like that I needed training about the Word of God. I, I, I really felt like in my mind and in my heart that I was able to absorb the Word of God and to speak it pretty well appropriately. Um, but the problem is that I was not conditioned at that particular time in my life to be able to do that effectively. That there was some work that God needed to do in me. I'm telling you that because that's an important part of what we're getting ready to talk about here in, in the in Titus. And so the, I felt like God needed to work something within me, refine something within me. And so um, Dorcas and I, we, we sold our business uh, and and moved, um, you know, 250 miles away and and uh, ended up in, in seminary and ended up in a in a ministry uh, uh, that surrounding that seminary 
um, to learn more about what God wanted me to do. And it was the development of that that really caused me to begin to understand that my own job description, as it were, at least what I thought at the moment, was church planting. Uh, And so I worked in different areas of that ministry, and when I got out of seminary, I began to plant churches and thought that's what I would do the whole time. And, and, And so in those early years, I really understand what uh, Paul is trying to say to Titus here uh, in in chapter in verse five of chapter one in Titus he says for this reason I left you Titus in Crete that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you now um, I, I'll respond to that in a little bit but. Uh, but as my life progressed on, I went on, I went on to plant some churches, and then I sought the Lord and actually went back to school to get my doctorate in marriage and family counseling uh, because I thought that would benefit my the value of of what God wanted me to do in planting churches. And when I planted New Life of Currituck, I wasn't necessarily planning on staying for any length of time. Uh, because I didn't at any other place as well. Um, But God had another lesson for me to learn. And so I have had to learn how, uh, even here at New Life of Kirtuk, uh, I have had to learn how to be a pastor. If if you would look at my giftings, it would be more apostolic in nature. Probably it tend to be a little bit more towards the prophetic um, is the way that God wired me. But God had to teach me. When I felt the word of the Lord saying that we needed to stay here at Currituck for a while, which now has actually been 20 years, <clears throat> um, I, I had to ask God how to retool me to be a pastor. And he didn't take the apostolic out of me. He didn't take the prophetic out of me. He lovingly taught me how to lead the church from the view of a pastor. It's really interesting how God does that in our hearts and in our lives. And so often, I believe we ignore that. Uh, he didn't change my personality. He didn't change my my skill set necessarily. But but he had to teach me how uh, to to work. And and part of that teaching was was more so the work that he had to do in me. And so the people that are along the way in that, some you're still in relationship with, some you're not. Um, and, and sometimes that hurts as well. And you have to acknowledge that and work through that. But that's a part of the challenge. I think so often today, if I could talk just a little bit about this, I think so often today, um, we are much better at pointing fingers uh, and and looking at causes rather than doing an internal investigation of what God is doing or wants to do in our own lives. And, and so there are growth things that God wants to do in us. There's purifying or perfecting. Both of those are good biblical words that maybe we could do a study on sometime. But it is, it, is, it is moving us from that glory to glory that God talks to. In order to move from glory to glory, it doesn't have to be a change in title. Uh, in fact, it has nothing to do with the title. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, moving from church to church. It doesn't have to be. It, it has everything to do with the internal work of God by the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that is the point and place and focus that most of us need to be in. If, if I allow God to work on me, I can be a better servant to those who are in need. And it is the process. I mean, it's exactly what Jesus did to the, to the uh, disciples and to those around him. We'll probably look at that a little bit more even in this podcast. And so it says here in Scripture, and so that's what God did in me. And so it says here in Scripture, look, Paul says, look, look, Titus, this is the reason that I left. It says, uh, I'm going to read it again. For this is the reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order, that you would set in order what remains. Now, 
there are two pictures uh, of what you could take that said in order means. One, you could take it as things are not in order. Uh, and, and maybe there's a part of that that you could say. Um, but, but I think the greater definition of what it means when it says set in order is that there's something yet to be discovered. I want you to hear me. That there's something yet to be discovered. In other words, there is an active growth in Christ that is happening in these churches. And so, Titus, I want you to be the discerner. I want you to be the discovery man in this process. And I want you to call out not just those individuals who may be now qualified, but you need to call out those that are not qualified and put them on a path to be qualified for what God wants to do. And, and so I, I, just, I just really uh, feel very strongly about that, that, that we need to be in that track. And we can call it discipleship. We can call it soul care. We can call it whatever we're developing right now at New Life of Kirtuk a new focus called soul care, and it is our um, uh, updated discipleship uh, plan and process to help individuals grow. And so in that process, I believe that there's an opportunity here to learn something about that. So <clears throat> so that's what it says. So Titus, this is what your job is. This is to, the, the, there is things happening. God is moving. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here what Peter is saying to Titus. Um, the churches are growing, um, but but in that growth, there needs to be some sort of order set in place. And so what is part of that order? It says uh, uh, what remains, um, and, and that is it remains for you to grow and expand the body of Christ. And it says appoint elders in every city. Then it goes on to, to say a little bit about um, what the requirements uh, might be uh, to begin looking at. And uh, I think I've said in podcasts before, and I've said it in preaching a lot, I'm not a huge um, uh, list person. You know, I, I don't like the idea of, <clears throat> you know, making, there's a long list, there's a bunch of check marks that we have to do. Um, there, there, there's, there's, you know, if you're this, 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 and this, because what happens is um, we can very easily skip over uh, what are some hang-ups and hurts and pains that we have, and and growth is is stunted by that because uh, in in that lineup we be, we begin to say if if I can check all these boxes on the side of things I am not that makes me better than, and that's not the goal of appointing elders. That's not the goal of building Christians. That's not the goal of building disciples and making disciples the way that God taught. It, the goal is actually through uh, personal relationships. That's the way Jesus did it. Uh, and so anyways, but but be that as it may, um, Paul gives Titus uh, a couple of <coughs> uh, guidelines here. If any man is above reproach, um, you know, he's in good standing. He he is 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 relational individual uh, and, and the husband of one wife, which is um, something that we maybe don't talk quite as much about today. Uh, but some I've heard some people teach on one wife, meaning that there shouldn't have been any divorce in there and remarriage. And so that doesn't you. Know, so that person is disqualified as well. I'm not going to go into that a whole lot. Uh, right here in this teaching, having children who believe um, this is another statement that you can kind of take one way or another, whether that's one or all the children. Um, but but it's more about what is this man's relationship with God and what's this man's relationship with his his uh, family. Not accused of dispensation or rebellion, for the overseer must be an approach. And he throws to he throws the word elder, and then he throws the word overseer. But really, both of them are in the same vein, if you would want to say that. Um, it is an individual that is to be set in place as a living example of living Christ into the world around them to help individuals grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and to share this good news uh, of God with them. 
The overseer must be above reproach. The same thing, God's steward, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, not fond of sorbid gain. If we read through the book of Acts, we can see um, that that you know this was written probably at the later stages of of the book of Acts and we know if we read through the book of Acts we begin to find out that there are a number of people Jews included um you know that were were using the the spirit filled life uh to to try to get spiritual gain uh uh or, or try to get natural gain excuse me uh with spiritual impact um num- uh, verse 8 is <clears throat> but hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, self-controlled, holding fast to the faithful word, which is in accordance to the teaching, so that he will be able to exhort in sound doctrine and refute those who contradict. That's a that's a beautiful statement there, uh, and and I'll I'll turn around and come back to that um, because then Paul goes on to write that there are rebellious men, empty talkers, deceivers, especially those of the circumcision who must be silenced. Interesting word. They must be silenced by sound doctrine and and being able to refute who contradict. That You do that um, through your life, not by what you teach, but what you do, by your, your conduct and speech. Uh, and maybe that's for uh, a whole nother podcast because that's the value of what we do. Um, one of themselves, a prophet, uh, their own said, Christians are always liars, and it goes on to talk about that, um, not paying attention to the Jewish myths and commandments of men, not of God, of men, that turn people away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, and to those who, who are defiled, unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but their de- their deeds deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for ever, for any good deed. Um, did you notice He said there by their deeds they deny Him? So it, and He also talks then about speech before that. So <clears throat> there are two things in this. It, it is their speech and their conduct. That, that our life is supposed, through speech and conduct, our life is supposed to be able to allow us to exhort, which is really encourage and also challenge. That, that is the meaning of ex- exhort or exhortation. It, it, is, it is the encouragement and the exhortation, the encouragement and the correction that comes. There are times when I try to encourage an individual and I don't try um, to confront them or anything like that. It's not the time. It's not the place. They just need a hand to, to pick them up off the floor. They need an encouragement to be there. Then there are other times when I will um, uh, really work to challenge them and correct them in the way that God would love to do that. Um, and, and so in this, we begin to see, and I, I want to I wanna take you because, because this is an example of, uh, of what Jesus really gave to the disciples in those last days. I want to take you to John chapter 16 and kind of spend the rest of the, this particular um, podcast, and we might come back to it later on, but this particular podcast in in John chapter 16, because first of all, I want you to, I want to read again to you the part where the Holy Spirit is promised. And Jesus said this to the disciples, but but now I am going to him who sent me. I'm going back to God. And none of you ask me where you're going because I have said these things to you and sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you and he will come. When he comes, he will convict the world in three areas concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. First of all, concerning sin, that's verse 9 in John chapter 16, concerning sin because they do not believe me, beginning of verse 10, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you no longer see me, and verse 11, because of judgment because the ruler of the world has been judged. Now, why is this important? This is important because you and I need to understand as servants of the Most High God, particularly those of us who are in leadership, but otherwise, uh, for every Christian, this is an important concept. This is an important thought that I think 
we need to hear. Um, and, and I'll come back to that, but it goes on in verse 12. I have many more things to say to you. You cannot bear them now. But he, the spirit of truth, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak of his own initiative. I want to stop. Right? But, but whatever he hears, he will speak and disclose to you what is yet to come. <clears throat> now, I want to go back, though, because this is one of the things that I begin to learn, even in my own process, that, that this, I will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me. So in other words, sin is a non-believe issue. Sin, um, sin technically, uh, it, me- it means that we can sin, certainly we sin as um, as individuals uh, and and flawed individuals, but but we cannot we cannot put ourselves in that particular part of it. it. The first part of it was before I came to know Christ concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you, no longer you you no longer see me. The second part is where I want you. To, to rest in if you are a believer today concerning righteousness in other words concerning purity concerning holiness God is going to through my relationship with God he is going to purify me he is going to make me holy as I seek him as I'm in relationship with him and and because he's no longer here the Holy Spirit is that individual that part of of, of the Godhead that is going to help me in that process. And then verse 11, concerning judgment because of the ruler of the world has been judged. That tells me that the victory has already been won. The victory is already mine in the name of Jesus. Through Jesus' blood and death and resurrection, the ruler of the world has been judged. And, and so that judgment is coming. And, and I must stand victorious on the concerning righteousness because I go to the Father. And that has everything to do in in my line of work anyway, and in, in my purpose and plan, when I say my line of work, I'm talking about my purpose and plan that God has for me. It is all about the relationship. And, and it is interesting because if you go to chapter 17, Jesus talks about this when he is talking about um, uh, um, the disciples. He says this in John chapter 17, I have manifested your name to the men you gave me out of this world. They were yours. You gave them to me. They have kept your word, and they and now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. And we, we are going to probably go back into that a whole lot more uh, in the coming podcast as we continue to look at this as, as Titus, um, as we go into Titus chapter 2. But I'm here to tell you today, brother and sister, that I want you to rest in the greatness and the goodness and the blessing of God. I want you to rest in the righteousness of God. What does the word rest mean? The word rest means is I do not have to worry any longer about my relationship with God. I'm, I'm in my relationship with God. I'm calling a forgiven um, I am called forgiven, I'm called loved, I'm called protected, I'm called a person who is guidable, and, and I can come into the presence of God, and I can bring the, the, the hang-ups and the hurts that I have, the disappointments, and even the sin that can so easily beset me, but I enter in under the blood of Jesus so that it can wash, it can purify me, it, it, can, it can make me clean and whole, and I must rest in that. I don't have to go back and get saved again. I have to walk into the presence of God, and I have to allow him to do his surgery in the inner parts of my life, in the inner parts of my heart, in the inner parts of my mind, in the inner parts of my con- conscience, so that I can be purified, so that so that the speech and conduct that I have reveals the character of God to the world around me. And, and it is that sound doctrine that God wants to exhort in me that will help me contradict or refute those who contradict uh, in that by my life, by the things that I say, by the conduct that I have 
by the family uh, and the individual that I represent, namely me in Jesus Christ, uh, to the world around me. So, brother, sister, as we talk about this, if you are in church leadership already, um, may you find that new qualification by by taking uh, yourself into the presence of God and and not point fingers. Don't or don't think that you're better than others. But but go into your prayer closet. Go into your times of of worship and praise. Go into your times of of rebuilding and renewal within side of you and let God by the power of his Holy Spirit do a transforming work in you so that you can through sound doctrine you can be in accordance to the teaching of Jesus Christ in, in, from the word to the world around you first of all to your relationship with God second of all to your family and to your your marriage if you are married your relationship with your spouse uh, then to the church uh, and then to the world around you that God may show his great character through your willingness may God bless you may God encourage you we are praying for you and remember God still loves his church and those who serve faithfully in it. Until next time, when we talk more about Titus and his goal and his um, job description, so to speak, from the Apostle Paul. Go in peace. Thanks for joining the Standing Firm Free Family, a ministry at New Life of Kurtuk here on Luke 418 Radio. Please let us know if there's any subject or thought that you would like to hear us discuss in this podcast. Send me a note at danbergy at luke418radio.com. That is a D-A-N-B-E-R-G-E-Y at luke418radio.com. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and give praise to Jesus who is able to keep you from stumbling and make you stand in the presence of his glory.